Cyclone MMA. <laughs> All right, it's 2 a.m. and I'm tired, so we're gonna we're gonna get through this this UFC 283 re- recap. Um, bangers, bangers all around, and a beautiful night of fights. I don't know if the Brazil crowd is happy right now because they had a few big losses, but overall they had a lot of Brazilian fighters win tonight. So we're gonna start with the top. We're gonna work our way down. We're gonna start with Glover Teixeira versus Jamal Hill. You guys all want to know about this fight especially if you haven't seen it. So Jamal Hill defeats Glover Teixeira via decision. He won every round handedly. Um, the main takeaways, Jamal Hill is legit. He's just not a knockout artist. He pieced up Glover Teixeira, who you know was a former champion, someone who was dominating his last fight until he lost. Not dominating, but winning his last fight until he lost. And Jamal Hill just looked really good. The high kick was there. His hands were landing. He was very smart. His IQ impressed me in this fight. He never rushed when he seemed like he didn't need to. He did a good job, you know, having a lot of output while also not gassing himself out. Glover Teixeira, the takeaways there, that dude's tough as nails. That dude is so damn tough, and he gave us yet another banger, yet another war. Sucks to see him go out, you know, all cut up on his eyebrows and his nose and retiring like that. But leaving his mark on, you know, his legacy, ending his career with an absolute classic of a fight. It's pretty cool. If you're not going to win your fight, I guess you might as well give the fans what they're looking for and just like have a spectacular performance. Um, I thought the the act of kindness where he's telling basically the Brazilian fans not to completely pelt Jamal Hill as he's leaving the octagon was cool. Um, Cause we saw Brandon Moreno before him get pelted with popcorn and beer and all kinds of shit. We'll talk about Brandon Moreno more in a second, but this Jamal Hill versus Glover to share fight was really, really good. Um, it went way longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be quick one way or another. I'm impressed by Jamal Hill. I think he fought really, really good. I think he proved a lot of doubters wrong. And I think he showed that he's legit. And he has a lot of competitors and contenders in this division that he's going to have some good fights with. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing how much he he evolves. Because he seems to have evolved, like, a lot. Like, he really impressed me with how good he was in this fight. So congrats to Jamal Hill. Best of luck with retirement to Glover Teixeira. Moving on, we have Davison Figueredo losing uh, a stoppage to Brandon Moreno. It was in the end of the third round, so they didn't let Figueredo come out for the fifth round. Uh, Or was it the second? It says round three, five minutes. So I guess it was between the second and the third, right? Yeah, that sounds right. This was a weird fight because... Brandon Moreno was definitely winning on the scorecards, I'd say. But Figueredo was leaving his mark on the fight. It seemed like on the feet, Moreno was winning. And he was able to get takedowns. But when he got those takedowns, Figueredo was able to get some really, really scary um, submission attempts. He had a few guillotines that were that seemed really close. One right away. Right away, Moreno goes for the takedown. Figueredo goes for the guillotine. And it looked like it was going to be done in 30 seconds. Moreno was able to get out of it, um, but Figueredo on the ground was just so good. The way he was able to just cinch up s- submissions like that, and he wasn't able to get the submission, but with how close he was with a few of those, it was pretty impressive. Um, ultimately, it was like a, a punch where like the knuckle of Brandon Moreno hit Figgy in the eye. Figgy thought it was like a, an eye poke. But it was clean, so Moreno kept going. There was like a bit of a scrape with the face, but it didn't seem like any of that caused anything. It was more of the knuckle when he went to punch him. So that's that's interesting. I guess the quadrilogy is over. If you're a Figueredo fan, you probably want you know a more definitive answer. But he's going up to welterweight, and we're going to see how he does there. He doesn't have to cut all that weight. It's really, I think, 125 has taken a toll on his body. So 135 is going to be, that's going to be tough for Figueredo because that's a really stacked division. But we're going to see. And as for Brandon Moreno, who, you know, took two out of the four fights and won them, he's probably going to fight Alexandre Pantoja next, who has two wins against him. So we're getting yet another trilogy 
out of Brandon Moreto, more than likely. More than likely, that's the fight they make next. Um, I don't know who they would have leapfrog him, but there are some other guys. I'm excited for the flyweight division to finally start moving on, get away from these guys. And w- But with that being said, the fights that we got between Figueredo and Moreno, they were all beautiful in their own different ways. The first one, Slugfest. The third one, Slugfest. The second one, one-sided beatdown for Moreno. And this one was just weird because it was like, the momentum kept shifting, yet Moreno kind of had it. Great performance by both guys. Um, wish I could have seen it go on longer, but if you can't see, you can't keep fighting. Next, we had a welterweight matchup. Gilbert Burns defeating Neil Magny with a submission in the first round. Now, this was a fight where Gilbert Burns was a heavy favorite for good reason. He's one of the best welterweights on the planet, and... You know, he's got power on the feet, so I was wondering how Magny was going to deal with that. I thought Magny was going to stay on the outside, just try to piece him apart. I think that probably was the game plan, but Gilbert shoots for a takedown, gets the takedown, and then just early, in I guess he had 45 seconds left in the round, and he just gets the submission and, and wins the fight. It was uh, pretty pretty textbook by Gilbert Burns. That's he can He can win a lot of fights if he just does that. Um, Neil Magny's no, he's no schmuck either. He's a really, really well wound, well rounded fighter, well rounded fighter. Um, and that's a good W for Gilbert Burns. He called for Colby Covington. I think that's a really good fight. I think that one stylistically, super interesting. Cause Colby, his main tool to try to beat Gilbert is the gas tank. If it's a three round fight. You don't really have to worry about that as much because Gilbert can last three rounds. But if it's a five-round fight, Colby could dr- drag him into deep waters. With that being said, if Colby's using his wrestling, he really, really has to watch out for Gilbert's BJJ because Gilbert will submit you. And if they're on the feet, Gilbert will knock you out. He's got a lot of power. So I think Colby versus Gilbert is a great matchup. With that being said, like whoever wins that, they probably shoot right back into a title fight. So those are two competitors who are really, really good in this division. And I think uh, I think they stack up well against Leon. And I, I'd like to see either of them try to fight Kamara Usman once again because they both did really good in their own different ways. So before that, you had Jessica Andrade versus Lauren Murphy. Get a load of this, okay? Jessica Andrade landed 237 strikes on Lauren Murphy and 231 of those were significant strikes. Uh, Lauren Murphy landed 103 strikes to 103 strikes total. And then a hundred of those were significant. So basically just Jessica Andrade. Oh my God, I'm having a stroke right now. She basically doubled her output. And this is one of those fights where it's like Lauren Murphy is a crafty veteran and she is really, really good. And she proved just how damn tough she is in this fight. But Jessica Andrade is just a buzzsaw, just a killing machine. And Laura Murphy had absolutely nothing there for her. Every round, you could have called every one of these rounds 10 8s. I think it ended up being a 30 26 fight. So that means one of the rounds was a 10 8, right? Is that math? That's math. Yeah, that's math. Um, I think one ref might have, or one uh, judge might have had it. 30 25 which means two of them were 10 eights but i think there's art there's an argument that three of the three rounds were 10 eights it was just a one-sided beat down and jessica andrage was swinging the hammer um it's interesting to see if jessica andrage is going to stay at flyweight or go back to straw weight she's just so good and she's a former champion and you could see her winning the belt on any given day if she has a good day but there's just a lot of killers in both of those divisions. And I think she beats, she's like the ultimate gatekeeper and she totally can win a title, but I'm excited to see where she goes next. It sounds like she wants to go back to straw weight, even though she's fighting at flyweight tonight, but congrats to Jessica Andrade and Lauren Murphy. You are a badass. That was crazy. I feel like, oh, like as a corner, you might want to stop that, but I'm not going to tell them what to do, I guess. Um, before that you had Johnny Walker knocking out Paul Craig. I knew this fight was going to be weird and it ended in a weird way. So you had Johnny Walker throwing a kick, Paul Craig grabs it and he's 
kind of going in to go for a takedown against Johnny Walker. Walker, it was I want to say it was a I want to say it was a right hook, but he basically kept swinging with both hands, and then he just started connecting. Paul Craig got clipped, went down, and Johnny Walker finished. It, he was Paul Craig was out. He was out, out. So Johnny Walker, he's in the win column. Um, how many in a row is that now? Is that one? Did he have a win before this? Yeah, he had a, he had a win before against Ion Kutalab, and before that he lost to Jamal Hill. Johnny Walker could be a player in this division. He's so athletic, so strong, and if he can really hone that and use it like he did tonight, he can have a lot of a lot of good performances, a lot of good wins. He's another guy. It's like when when you have power like that, you can you can win on any given night. So I mean, he a few years ago he was the guy. He was gonna be he was gonna be the guy to beat John Jones. That was the that was the big storyline, and that's completely gone away. But with the way this division's shaping up, you could see Johnny what Johnny Walker fighting for a title in a few years if he just strings a few together. But um, just skimming the prelims right now, seeing if there's anything. Shogun Rua knocked down in the first round. Um, he retired. So that's a bummer for Brazil that he would retire like that. And also, I don't even know. Did I talk about Clover Teixeira retiring? I'm so tired right now that I'm not even sure if I talked about that. I freaking hope I did. Um, a lot of Brazilians won on this. Tiago Moises with a really good submission in the first round. Bruno Ferreira knocking out Gregory Robocop Rodriguez. That was unexpected. Um, welcome to the UFC. A lot of finishes. A lot of finishes here. I'm looking at the early prelims now. Jailton Almeida just showed why he's a beast. Um, what else? There was... Okay, here it is. Ismail Bonfim versus Terrence McKinney. That fight was crazy. Bonfim was really taking it to McKinney. And I was surprised because I put money on this fight. I put money on Terrence McKinney winning because anytime he fights, it just seems like he fights like someone's trying to kill his children. And he's like... That was really morbid. I'm sorry about that. But, like, he legit fights like a crazy man. He just goes ham. He goes after it. And he was seen more measured in this fight. And Bonfim, at, on the other hand, went right to work. And he landed a crazy knee. It was, like, like on the jaw, neck area and just completely took out Terrence McKinney. So, yeah. Crazy night of fights. I'm tired. Glover to Sharon Lauren Murphy are... Tough as nails. Jamal Hill proved a lot of people wrong. Um, Davison Figueredo has something in his eye. Uh, Brandon Moreno ran away from people as they were throwing popcorn and beer at him. And then he was laughing in the back like a goober. And that brought me joy and happiness and smiles and laughter. Um, Paul Craig should not grab Johnny Walker's leg. And... Jamal Hill needs to cover the tattoos on his chest because those looks like the hamburger helper logo, but like in the thumb position, like thumbs up position. Not a fan of it. Sorry, bro, but it's it creeps me out. I don't like it. 